great day to everyone watching online. Get on your feet. It's time to worship. Let's go. What your goodness does Come on, favor You make all things All things new Let's go You make all things Beautiful Jesus You rose again Defeated dead And now I live
a part of the team here at Favor. We are so glad that you're joining us, whether you're here in Crown Plaza or you're watching online. Are you excited to be here? It's Sunday. What I love about Sunday is I feel like, you know, maybe throughout the week you do your work, you do, you know, school. But then Sunday, I feel like Sunday is an anything can happen kind of day. Could you look at the person next to you, just like, you know, wiggle your eyebrows or just give them a fist bump or an elbow bump and say anything can happen. If you're watching online, type it on the chat, anything can happen. I bet you didn't expect that someone was going to wriggle their eyebrows at you today. Anything can happen. <laughs> Okay, I love being at church. We're so glad that you're joining us. You know, here at Favor Church, we really believe in the power of prayer. So we're going to enter back into worship in a bit. But we want to take this time to intentionally pray for you. If you're watching online, you can go to live.favor.church. We have awesome people from our prayer team ready to pray with you. Uh, if you're not watching live, you can just email us at prayer at favor.church. And then someone within the week from our team is going to get in contact with you. But if you're here in the room, you see, we have really, really felt recently that there's just so much happening and it's so different when someone actually stands with you. I mean, it's great to be able to get a text message, but there's something different with, with having a physical presence in front of you. And so that's why today we want to invite you to come forward for prayer. <laughs> Too, because this is something that's so important to our church and if you've ever been to a live service you know how important that is so if that's you today we have prayer stations on the side we got three over here in the left we got one over there behind the camera and then you can also come forward and then someone from our staff our leaders our prayer team we want to stand with you because we believe that God can answer prayers amen and if you're new Here's what we also believe. We also believe that something special happens when you step out in faith. So that act of just coming forward, it's this act of humility. It's an act of recognizing that, you know, I can't do it on my own. And that if someone can pray for me, we believe that the prayer of a righteous man or woman is powerful and effective. So if you have a prayer request, why don't you do this? Could you go ahead and type it on your phone as you come forward? So we lessen the whole shouting through the masks and the face shields. Type it, show it to the person who's going to pray for you. We're going to keep things socially distanced. Don't worry. Our prayer people will wear their masks, wear their face shields, um, but they're going to pray with you. All right. So can we do that? And come on right now, you can start coming forward. You can start stepping out of your seat, going to the sides. And come on, everyone, as we enter back into this time of worship, would you lift up your hands father gosh this is so significant today lord god this is us saying that we need you more than anything that we are not afraid that we are going to be a people who's going to step out in faith and we are going to experience your goodness we're going to experience your miracles we're going to experience your presence and so right now god would you hear our prayers would you come we want to honor you today we want to worship you today we want to have an encounter with you today in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen come on church let's worship and come forward if you'd like prayer
cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found.
belongs to our God. Come on, sing it out tonight. Your battle belongs to our God. He is fighting for us. He's in control. He is fighting for us. The battle belongs to you. The battle belongs to our God. Come on. The battle belongs to our God. He is fighting. fighting for us. We have a God who goes before us, who is on our side, and who brings up the rear behind us. And so whatever your battle is, there's people that are watching online right now. There's people in the room. Your battle is your health. You're fighting a sickness and disease from the pit of hell. Maybe your battle is your finances. Today, maybe your battle is that addiction that thing that you just can't say no to and it just keeps coming back. And it comes, maybe your battle is your marriage or your kids or your parents, a, a family relationship. I don't know what your battle is, but I know that God is fighting for you. I know God is fighting for you. Come on, if you're going through a battle, can you lift your hands to heaven right now? And we're gonna sing that new song. Man, I love that new song. I lift my head in the battle. Why? Because when you lift your head in the battle, you take your eyes off your situation and you lift them to heaven. Come on, declare it. I lift my head, I lift my head. I lift my head in the battle. Come on, set your eyes on Jesus today. Hey, we're not fighting against 
flesh and blood. We need a spiritual. We need spiritual help in this battle. you'd want to be on a Sunday morning right now. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's easy to shout in the room when everyone's shouting. And I believe that God's bringing breakthrough, but this is what I want to encourage you. Don't let Sunday during a service be the only time that the devil hears your war cry. Don't you just love, don't you just love I know many of you, that's the first time you heard that song. That song has been on repeat for me probably the last three weeks. And it's just like my war cry. Because there's a war, there's a battle. Sometimes we as Christians, we think we're just supposed to be these good little Christians with a sheep on our shoulder like Jesus had. No, we're, we're in a war. We're in a battle. There's a kingdom supernatural battle going on. And we are, guess what? We are conscripted into the army of the Lord. And so what's our greatest attack? What's our greatest weapon? It's our praise. So for many of you, you're like, well, everyone's shouting, but I'm still sick in my body. Okay, let faith rise up. Let faith rise. Begin to, play, begin to pray and begin to shout, begin to believe that God is going to do what he's promised in his word that he's going to do. Let your, faith, let your faith go before your reality. Let your faith take you where the facts won't let you go. Lift your head in the battle. We're all going, hey, if you're breathing, you're going through a battle. And we need a Jesus. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. If we've never met before, my name's James. I'm so glad that you're here. And I, I just love church. I love Jesus the most, but I love the local church. I love that we gather together. My, my faith is inspired by, by singing with you. I hear, I hear people singing and I, I'm actually uplifted. I want to encourage you if you're watching online and if you can get down here this afternoon, if you can come to church the next couple of weeks, do it because there's just something about being in the room. There's something supernatural about being with other believers. God did not design us to be islands on our own. He designed us to be in community. The Bible says even before the fall of man, even in perfection, God said it is not good for man to be alone. So what makes you think it's good for a Christian to be alone? It ain't. Come, get involved in community. I'm so, glad, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you're joining with us and watching with us. If you're in the room, you can take your seats. We're going to uh, just spend a moment praying for what we do every week in our church, which is take up our tithes and our offerings. There's so many different ways that you can give uh, to our church. We try to make it as easy as possible for you 
to give. Uh, and, uh, and it's really cool. I was going through the stats this week uh, with Yousel, our CFO. And did you know that now, uh, because of COVID, obviously, we really encourage everyone to give online or to give into the bank or Gcash, anything like that. Uh, our giving now, nine over 99.5% of our giving is all online. It's all, people have adjusted, they've put it online. And I really wanna thank you because online is, is so much better. Uh, it's safer, it means it goes directly into the account. It's automatically accounted for and audited uh, because it goes straight into our account. It, it's so good. Uh, and so I wanna encourage you, if you can give, give online, give through one of the electronic methods as well. Um, and I mean, a lot of times people wanna give cash because they wanna you know, uh, launder their money from all the drug deals that they're doing as well. So if that's you, come and see us. We wanna pray for you, lead you to Jesus uh, as well. And then pray over the money in Jesus' name and let it come in. Come on, why don't we pray? If you're giving today, uh, that was a joke by the way, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just say everyone gets triggered so easily now. We, we ha I can't be sarcastic, I have to say joke, joke lang po. Uh, uh, so, but, but if you are a drug dealer, come and see us because we'll pray, we'll pray with you. And, and that's why we exist is for you. Uh, we want to we love on you. So if you're giving today or you've given this week or this month, come on, why don't you put your hand on your heart as we pray. Lord, we just thank you that you love us, that you care for us. And, uh, and God, I pray that as we give today, uh, that you would bless it, multiply it. We see many, many, many thousands of people come into the kingdom of heaven uh, through today's giving and generosity. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. If you actually do have cash, I forgot to say, if you do have cash and you want to give, you can give it in the foyer. We've got a, a giving station in there as well. Well, this week coming up, you're going to see it a little bit later on in news. But this week coming up, we have our mid-year presence week. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's, whoopsie, this is the wrong one. Uh, and so uh, it's, it is so exciting. We do this twice a year, one at the beginning of the year and one in the middle of the year. And basically, if you've been around church and you understand Christianese, uh, this is our week of prayer and fasting. If you're new to church, uh, then and you think, why, why are we fasting? It's not intermittent fasting. Uh, that's not what we do. Why we pray and fast is, is that we can see all throughout the Bible, God gives us a blueprint of a way that we can become more intimate with him. And one of those ways is actually through prayer and through fasting. And in our church, I, I don't have time to preach a whole message, but I'll give you a little two minute one. In our church, we, we read the Bible and we can see that uh, biblical fasting actually comes back to giving up some type of food. Now, in modern day church, a lot of people talk about, well, I'm fasting social media this week and, I, and I'm fasting, you know, video games or I'm, I'm fasting hanging out with my friends, wh whatever it is. Can I say those are incredible and you should do that, but that's not actually biblical fasting. What they are, are distractions. And it's great in a presence week, it's great to fast distractions like social media, Netflix, uh, all those types of things. But a biblical fast is actually fasting some type of food. Why? Because we need food for our body to live. And when we go without food, and obviously see your GP, uh, make sure that it's cleared by your doctor. But when we go without food, what we're saying is this, that we don't live by bread alone. But in our weaknesses, we actually come to God, rely on His strength. And so in those moments of weakness, when it's like, oh, I just want to eat. Come on. How many of y'all have ever fasted before? Whenever I fast, I have dreams of food. I have dreams of giant hot dogs running after me going, eat me, eat me. Like it's, it's not easy. Uh, but what happens is in those moments where I'm physically weak, that's when I look to heaven, I go, God, I'm physically weak. I need you to make me strong right now. And prayer and fasting is an unbelievable way to see breakthrough in your life, to stir the spiritual hunger in your life, to grow your intimacy with God. And as a church, 
We do it corporately as a church because we want to see breakthroughs in your life. We want to see you become more intimate with God. But corporately as a church, we want to see breakthroughs in our church. We want to see the spiritual hunger and temperature of our church begin to rise. And so I'm really excited. Every day this week, we've got a prayer meeting or something going on. And this Friday, we've got Presence Night right here in this building. Uh, but we've only got a certain amount of tickets. So you have to book as soon as, when are we, when are we releasing it? It's on, are we, but is it today we're releasing the tickets? Yeah. So you're the first service. So you get to see this before the afternoon, all the sleep in people, you get first crack at this. And so you need to book because we're going to have a cutoff because we're legally only allowed a certain amount of people. And if you've never been to a presence night, let me tell you, it's my favorite, it's my favorite night of the month and we haven't had a, a church-wide gathering presence night in uh, in nearly a year and a half uh and and the last one was just unbelievable and so we've done it online but really excited so if you have any questions on prayer or fasting you want to know a little bit more about it please Come and see us at the end up in our VIP section in the back corners of the church. Ask any of our leaders, pastors, and we'll take a little bit more time just to explain what it is. But I want to encourage you to do it. Fast some sort of food. Fast the distractions as well. And let's really believe that God's going to do miracles this week. Amen. I said amen. Amen. Well, if this is your first time today attending our church, we're so glad that you are with us. I want to welcome you. And in fact, we, we just don't want to say hi to you. We want to get a gift into your hands. And so standing up all around our auditorium right now, we've got some of our amazing VIP team that have in their hands something called a favored church gift bag. It's got a little goodies in there, some little gifts for you. But most importantly, we've got information on our church, who we are, why we do what we do, and also uh, ways that you can get involved and become more a part of this community if you want. At the end of the service, if you bring this bag up to the back corner to our VIP section, we've got a special favor church umbrella that we want to give you. And it's rainy season. Come on, how many of y'all are excited to get? You're only allowed one if you're new. Don't just get one because you want the umbrella. Uh, but we want to give that as a gift to you just to say thank you for coming to church. So if you're in the building right now, if that's you, if it's your first time in here, or maybe someone brought you as our team begin to roll through these big aisles, could you just stick up your hand, grab their attention because we want to get these bags into your hand. Come on. We got hands beginning to go up everywhere, all over the auditorium. Favor church. Come on. Can you lift your voice? Can you clap your hands? Let's really welcome them. We got one back here, hasn't got one, we got some more hanging out, this is so cool. Hey, one more time, come on, let's really welcome every person here. You and I. Uh, so remember, if this is your first time, please come up the back, see us, we'd love to connect with you. And if you're online watching, and uh, maybe you're within Metro Manila or around the Philippines, or maybe you're across the planet, wherever you are. Thank you for tuning in. Please let us know that this is your first time because we'd love to connect with you online. We've got connect groups that happen uh, throughout all time zones of the earth. People are connected with our church around the planet. And so we just so appreciate you joining uh, with us. Well, today was an exciting day in our church because uh, for the first time in a long time, we, we uh, uh, prayed for people during our worship. It's something that pre-COVID we used to do a lot. And, uh, and we decided that, uh, you know, we take all the safety uh, uh, restrictions and we do it well. A lot of our team is getting vaccinated already. And so today we were able to pray for people in worship, which is just, it's awesome. I love it. One of the other things that we used to do pre-COVID was we would take just one minute in the middle of the meeting just to stand up and meet someone uh, around them. Now, here, here's the thing. Let me just say this. Let me say this. What, one of the, the most horrible things that COVID has done is COVID has put a barrier between people connecting. 
right? Masks and shields. It's like this physical barrier. Now we don't want to talk to people. We don't. But the fact that you're all out here right now, I'm just talking for online. I'm talking for people in here. The fact that you're out here means there's a level of faith that you have, a level of trust, and you're taking precautions. And so what we want to do is we really want to make sure that in our church, we're not just running a service, but we're really growing a community of believers. And so we've done a couple of things. Today, at the end of the service, we've changed our service time so that you don't have to run out of the building, but you can stay in here and connect with people and talk, get to know some people from within your church. The music's going to be a lot softer so that you can hear each other through your masks and through your shields. But as well, we just want to take a minute right now in the middle of the service just to stand up. The music's going to be soft so you can hear and just say hi to someone around you. If you haven't been out and this is your first time out, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to freak out. Uh, Jesus is still on the throne, uh, but say hi. Make sure your mask is up. Make sure you're, you know, respecting other people. But church, come on. Can we take a minute right now? Just everyone stand on your feet. If you're online, I'm throwing you over to Favorhood for 60 seconds right now. Come on. I'll see you in one minute. There is nothing like being in the room, not Amen. gonna lie, right? I super, super agree, Bea. That's nothing true. The like experience the here is so different. And so listen, if you still have time to get here, if you're from Metro Manila, yep. come, come. We still have our Taglish services. And even later on, what the time is our new time? 4 p.m. Four service. PM. So just a reminder, we have new time slots. So that's 10, 1, and 4. Awesome. Hey, yep. you know what? I want to see who's watching on yes, Facebook. Sir. Why don't you check other platforms, bro? I'm going to check here on YouTube. I see Bianca. Wow. Shout out to you, Selena shout Bianca. Out, shout out. If you guys want some shout outs, comment. Comment. Pal- yeah, Rico's Thanks. watching. Rico Tiong Son. What uh, is up? Jack of all trades. Mr. Wow, Jack Jared on Facebook. Are you really new, bro? Are you new? <laughs> I want to shout out Jared. to Dinro Zamora and Serena, who yes. just said charot. <laughs> Natanya Amor, hello, welcome, welcome. So glad that you're watching online with us. Really appreciate you guys. And we're throwing you back to the main church. Okay, all right. That's all we got time for. Welcome back online. I hope that you had fun in our favor hood. So great. Uh, We're we're doing church hybrid. We're cutting back, going here. It's amazing. I can't wait. You know what's been awesome about COVID? COVID is preparing our church for when we do multi-site around Manila, around the Philippines, even around the world. We can cut between different locations and it's going to be amazing. Well, hey, in just a moment, I'm excited because we're continuing on our leadership series in church called I Am a Leader. And we've got one of, I believe, the best young leaders in the whole country. Uh, Pastor Paul Carolino is about to come up and continue our series. But before he does that, why don't we check out all the wonderful things happening in our church in this week's edition of Favor News. What's up, Favor fam, and welcome to this week's edition of Favor News. There's so many great things happening in the life of our church, so let's get started. Press this week is this week. This is five days of prayer and fasting as a church, as we believe for God to move in our personal lives, our church, and our nation. Here's a few important things to know. Our favorite studio at Shang is open all week for you to come and worship, pray, and simply enjoy God's presence. Our studio is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday and Thursday, and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday. Bring your Bible, journal, and your own water bottle. We'll also be having prayer nights on Monday and Tuesday, 6 to 6.30 p.m., and Wednesday morning prayer from 7 to 7.30 a.m. on Zoom. On Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m., we have Family Night. This is a night for our leaders and volunteers as we speak into our culture and where we're headed as a church. We have limited slots and persons, so book a seat at favor.church slash presenceweek RSVP or join us online at favor.church slash family night live. Then on Friday night at 8 p.m., Presence Night is finally happening live at Crown Plaza. This is a night of prayer and worship and it's a perfect way to cap off Presence Week. Again, we've got limited slots in the room, so book a seat at favor.church slash presenceweek RSVP or join us online via Facebook, YouTube, or Kumu. 
If all of that just flew all over your head, get all the information about everything happening during Presence Week at favor.church slash Presence Week. Hey ladies, this Thursday for our mid-year prayer and fasting, we'll be gathering together for our Favor Girl worship and prayer night. Favor Girl together on Zoom. This is a night where women of all seasons in life will spend time worshiping and praying together. If you know a girl who needs a prayer or wants to get connected in the community, invite her along with you. See you at favor.church slash favorgirl online on Thursday, July 8th at 8 p.m. Can't wait! Hey, favorite kids! Summer class starts this week. We'll be having one-hour workshops this month, once a week with your talented teachers. You can invite your siblings, neighbors, and friends and learn to do all sorts of fun things. The best part is, it's free. Registration is open until 8 p.m. today. So parents and guardians, go to favorite.church slash favorite kids next to sign up your kids. See you there! Favorite Church, we love celebrating milestones. So congratulations to Daniel and Andrea for the birth of their baby boy, Achilles. We love you guys! Aside from the service, we've got services for kids, high school students, and one with Filipino Sign Language Interpretation. Plus, our Taglish service is happening every Sunday at 1 p.m. To get more information on these services and everything else happening in the life of our church, head to our website, favorite.church, or visit our social media channels popping up on your screen right now. And that is it for Favorite News. Hey, good morning. It's good to be in the house. I'm so glad you're here, whether you're in the room or you're watching with us online. If we haven't met yet, I'm Paul, and I'm on the team here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump straight into it. We're, we've been going through a series we're calling I Am a Leader. Can you say it with me? I Am a Leader. That's right, because wherever you are, whoever you are, no matter how young or how old you are, you are leading someone. And I know that this series have been, have been changing mindsets of people in our church. Uh, just a few days ago, I was having dinner with some of our guys in, in your house, and we were having dinner, and we ordered Hong Kong-style Chinese food. Anyone love Chinese food? Maybe not a good topic before Presents Week, um, so not, I'm not going to mention the name of the restaurant, but if you want to sponsor us for our breaking of the fast, please message me, message me. But we're, so we're eating with some of the guys, and at some point, there was just one chicken left, right? And you know, in the Philippines, we are like this. When there's just one piece left, we will wait. And we will look at that and decide like that, and we'll wait. We'll wait until one friend of yours will say, anyone want this chicken? Right? And you know that deep inside their heart, their heart, they want the chicken. But they're asking out of respect if anyone wants the chicken. But some of one, one of the guys who's 18 years old, um, who's been watching our leadership series, um, said, hey Paul, I saw you just ate just a few, and so I want you to have this chicken. And I'm like, oh wow, thank you so much. You're, you're very honoring. And he said, no, no problem, no problem. Serve of leadership. <laughs> and he threw the trash, picked up the trash, and then threw it away and he's saying, serve of leadership. And so I really think that this has been getting into the hearts of our people. <laughs> well, it was his trash anyway. I don't know why he had to mention that. But that's what we talked about in week one, week two. Pastor James preached an amazing message about family. And I would even say that if we would get this in our spirits, we have the chance to reframe the narrative of the families in our nation. I'm believing we're going to raise up honoring children and parents who will steward their children like gifts from God. And the last week, we talked about leading yourself, which is phenomenal because I think in the world right now, everyone wants to be a leader, but in our companies, I would say only a few companies actually talk about how to lead yourself so that you can lead other people. Is that right? And all of these are important because again, no matter how young or old you are, you are leading someone. Someone is counting on you. God has called us to influence the people around us, to add value to these people. But we can't do that 
if we're not growing as leaders. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the life of Jesus. I believe he's the goat. He's the greatest of all time. He's the greatest leader of all time. And what you want, what we want you to have after this series, I'm wrapping it up, but I'm not really going to conclude this series because leadership is not a product. It's not a destination. It's a lifelong journey that we're all growing into. If you are taking down notes, I'll reveal my title in the middle. So just leave it as blank for now. But that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we want you to get what, what, what you want you to get out of this service. It's not just a revelation of like, oh, I'm so, I'm a servant leader. Or not just, okay, I am not my parents' retirement plan. And so we don't want you to put that on your IG handle, Jason Cruz, child of God, 18, not your retirement plan. We don't want you to do that. What we want you to have after this series is a game plan on how you can move forward in your journey in leadership. And so before I read, before I read the passage that we're going to go through, I want to pray. God, thank you, Lord, for, for, for our church. We thank you, God, for this series that we've been going through. We pray, God, that you would move. Today, I pray that you would use what I'm about to preach, God. Use the concept, use the story, use the thought, God, to bring breakthrough in people's lives. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We pray that the Phoenix Suns, God, would take the NBA Finals this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said, Amen. I want to read from Luke 2, chapter, chapter, Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 43. Um, this is the only text in the Bible that talked about Jesus while he was growing up. And so I think it's good for us to study the only text when Jesus was being developed as a leader. It says here, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. And after the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first. Interesting. They went on to this festival as usual, and they left Jesus behind. And for a day, in other translations say, that they didn't notice that Jesus was missing. And I don't know about you, but if I was Joseph and Mary, and I was entrusted with just a small task, you know, malit na bagay lang, just to take care of the Savior of the world, maybe I wouldn't forget about him like I forget about my face shield. But upon reading this, in Luke 2 verse 44, it said that because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up in that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. And I realized, maybe I can't really blame Mary and Joseph because they attended the celebration as usual and they assumed he was among the other travelers as well. And isn't that like us? that the human tendency is that when we're so caught up with our schedules, that we can just go through the motions and respond to what's urgent, respond to the bills that we have to pay, the tasks that we have to accomplish, the deadlines that we have to beat, the meetings that we have to attend, the shows that we need to watch, that we miss out on what truly matters in our life and in our leadership. We can focus on everything that's urgent and forget about what really matters. Just like how they forgot about Jesus. So here's the game plan. The game plan is that we have to be intentional with how we are living our lives. The main concept of, of the sermon I'm about to preach, I'm preaching right now, uh, is a realization I got when I was reading a book by James Clear called Atomic Habits. Great book. And as I was reading it, it's a book about how to live your life intentionally. As I was reading it, I realized if there's someone who lived this out perfectly, it's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He lived his life intentionally. So the concept goes like this. In the Philippines, we are a democratic country, right? And so people win by votes. And we know this since we were in elementary we would elect our class president and our class vice president. And I don't want to brag about it, but I would be elected as the vice president every single year. If you're asking why, it's because they didn't really see me as a responsible person at that time, but they were voting for me. And it's quite traumatizing, to be honest, because 
they were voting for me as the vice president just because I was good looking. <laughs> and and you, you don't understand, you don't understand. You don't understand what it feels to be judged by your cover. And I just felt so, so judged at that time that they were electing me as the vice president just because I was good looking. Are you kidding me? Can you guys think a little bit deeper? Anyways, the, the concept is the person who will have the most votes will win. In the same way, you, who you become, is the sum of the choices that you make. So the main thought of this message, and if there's one thing you can remember, is this. With every choice you make, you cast a vote to the leader that you are becoming. With every choice that you make, you cast a vote to the leader that you are becoming. Oh, I have a little something here. Please don't fall off. Please don't fall off. Wow. This is heavy, yeah? One. So I'll have a little something here. And uh, these are Lego pieces. And I, I would say, every single, in every single day of, of our lives, we are entrusted with opportunities to make choices. We're entrusted by God to make godly choices. And these choices can either shape us or break us. So for each choice that you make, you can either cast a vote to who God wants you to become and build on the character that he wants you to build on by living intentionally, or you can conform to the pattern of the world and build something that will easily crumble. Romans 12 verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is good, His pleasing and perfect will. And so every time you cast a vote on the leader that you, God wants you to go on, for example, you patiently fill up the state-of-the-art high technology contact tracing form in the MRT, which is manual handwriting, by the way, which I bet someone is reading and really working hard to trace those people. When you patiently fill that up, I would say you are casting a vote to becoming a patient leader. When you choose, when you choose to stand up for integrity, you're casting a vote to become a leader who has integrity. When you choose to wake up in the morning and not read your, your, your social media or not tune into Netflix first, you're choosing to prioritize God and you're choosing to be a devoted leader. But when you choose to just go through the motions and just do what the world's telling you to do and just take that bribe, just lash out on your relatives because you were angry, just do choices because you feel like it. What you're doing is you're conforming to the pattern of the world and you're living a life. You're becoming someone who will easily crumble. With every choice that you make, you're casting a vote to the leader that you're becoming. The title of, mess of my message is this. Who are you voting for? Who are you voting for in your life? This Presence Week, I think, is a, an unbelievable opportunity for us to pray about who we are becoming. An unbelievable opportunity for us to maybe take a step back and reflect with our lives of what we're becoming with the choices that we are making. Because I believe that more than the blessings that God can give you, what can take you farther is who you're becoming. In Luke 2, verse 52, the, the passage that we're, that we're reading, it ends with this. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. He grew in favor with God and all the people. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, He grew holistically because He approached His life holistically. He grew in wisdom. He grew intellectually. He grew in stature physically. He grew in favor with God spiritually. And He grew in favor with people. He grew relationally because He approached life holistically. And so I want to pull out some thoughts from this passage and how Jesus was developed. Luke 2 verse 45 to 46 says this. When they couldn't find Him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. The Son of God, the Savior of the world, took time to listen and to ask questions. He himself was developed. I think sometimes in our, in our Christian journey, 
We get so consumed with a destination, but maybe God's more about your development. Maybe He's about how He's developing you more than where He is taking you. It took me some time to, to finish college, and as you all know, it's kind of embarrassing in family reunions because your tita would ask you, Oh, hijo, how are you now? What are you doing? Are you working now? Oh, you're still in college. You're delayed, hijo. And I would respond, no, 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 no. I'm being developed. Because <laughs> I'm learning. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay to take your time to learn. I mean, I don't want to name drop, but both of our electric guitarists took at least seven years to finish college. But that's okay, Jay and I. Biggs and I, we were classmates. We were classmates. And we were taking our time to learn. Because here's what I know, no matter how old you are, if you want to be a leader, you got to be a learner. Leaders are learners. The first thing that I got from how Jesus was developed is this. He embraced learning as a lifestyle. If you want to grow in your leadership, if you want to vote for who God wants you to become, you got to embrace learning as a lifestyle. Because here's the thing, you never graduate from learning. You never graduate for learning. There's always something new that God wants to teach you. And my question for you is this. How are you investing in your growth? Are you voting to become who God wants you to become by how you're learning? Or are you just, are you just going through the motions? The most precious resource that God has given to us is our time. But are we just passing time or are we investing our time in something that's worthwhile? Look to verse 47. It says, all who heard them were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And the reason why Jesus had understanding is because he embraced learning as a lifestyle. He was secure enough to ask questions and to listen to people so that he could embrace the development process that God has put him in. Psalm 90 verse 12 says this, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Are you numbering your days so that you could gain a heart of wisdom? I learned from Pastor James early on that the, one of the best indicators if someone is going to become a great leader is if they're asking questions and if they're listening to you. One of our amazing regional leaders, um, which I, I saw her be raised up by Migs and I saw her grow, grow into, in, into her calling, every time we would meet and we would gather, he would present a bunch of questions, anywhere from between 7 to 17 questions. And he would tell me, Paul, I have a few questions for you. Question number one, what if this leader has developing some feelings for this other leader, but the other leader doesn't reciprocate it? What do you do, Paul? What do we do? And he or she would come up with a list, a long list of questions. But to me, that's her being humble enough to ask. That's her being hungry to learn. Because I think the moment that we get too proud to listen, and too proud to ask is the moment that we get too proud to learn. The greatest enemy of our progress is our pride. The greatest enemy of our progress is our pride. That's why in 1 Peter 5 verse 5, it says here, All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. He shows favor to the humble. So here's what hap was happening. Every time you ask a question... You are casting a vote to becoming a leader who is humble. Every time you, you lay off your pride and you listen to someone's advice and not be too proud to just go on your own way, you're casting a vote to become a leader whom God will show favor to. And I don't know about you, but I want God's favor in my life. I want to be humble enough to ask questions. I want to be humble enough to listen to other people. When was the last time that you asked somebody about something that you wanted to learn. Because of Google and because of the internet, I think sometimes we get too proud to ask. And we think, oh, it's okay. They're going to see me as a lesser being if I ask questions. But maybe God's, God wants to teach you something through a question that he wants you to ask. When was the last time you asked God, God, what are you teaching me in this season? If we're going to grow to be leaders that will change this nation, we got to learn from God. We got to embrace learning as a lifestyle. 
Last week, we, we were in a meeting, we're planning something for our youth and young adults. I'm so grateful and so blessed that we are a church that believes in the next generation. I really believe that if we want to change this nation, we got to invest in the younger generation. And so we were planning something for our youth and young adults and some, some girl volunteered to take the minutes. I want to take the minutes, right? And so they took the minutes and I think I was wrapping up and I said, really the, the point of what we're doing is we want to get the next generation out of having a temporal mindset to having an eternal mindset. And then she wrote that down. The next, the next day, as I was writing the sermon, I was looking at the board, and she didn't write down eternal mindset. She wrote down internal mindset. Uh, I'm like, maybe she didn't clean her ears or something, or she was talking to someone, but it got me thinking. Maybe having an internal mindset is a mindset that God wants us to have. Because sometimes as Christians, we can tend to believe for the breakthrough. We can tend to hope for the provision. We can tend to just rely on the opportunity that God's going to open. But maybe before God opens up the opportunity, or maybe before God changes the external, He wants to change you internally. Maybe he wants to do something in you before he wants to do something through you. Because I know that my God, he wants to change people, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. Amen. What I've been learning um, recently is that, like what Pastor James said, there's a war. And the more responsibilities you get in your, in your leadership, the more responsibilities you get with having kids, when you, when you are, get promoted to a leadership position, the more opportunities there are, there are for the enemy to attack you. And so what I've been learning is in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 15, it says here, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we have to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Because in your journey... There will be distractions just like that sound. There will be distractions that will come through your head and will try to reframe your narrative. But what, you, what we have to do is take captive those thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. So that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind and we can become who God wants us to become. So that we can frame our narrative according to His design. Amen. I will continue reading. Luke 2 verse 48. It says here, that his parents didn't know what to think. The, son, the mother said, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. It's quite dramatic. Uh, but, but what I'm getting from this is that, in the like us, a lot of times we can try and search for sources in how we can grow, how we can have a better life in every single place except the Bible. There's, always, there's so many resources right now, the new age rising up, self-help coming up, love yourself coming up, right? Anyone here a Virgo? Can you raise your hand if you're a Virgo? Uh, okay, okay, I see some people. Anyone here a Capricorn? Capricorn? Capricorn compatible to Leo? Come on, don't pretend. Don't pretend you don't read those stuff. Anyone here a Libra, right? Or your year of the dog, year of the rat? Listen, listen, listen. None of those matter in your journey, in your leadership. Because the stars aren't going to determine where you're going to go. It's God who will determine that and the choices that you make. So what will separate you from other leaders is if you know what you are all about. And you're not about all those astrology, new age stuff. Look at your friend who just shared their horoscope early this morning. No, don't, 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 don't look at them. Just kidding, just kidding. But I know Jesus, he knew what he was about. He says here, Luke 2 verse 49, he said, But why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? If you want to vote for who God wants you to become, you got to be about the father's house. You got to be about building the kingdom of God. And I know this for a fact that the, the kingdom of God is not building a building, it's building a community. It's building a community of believers, building other people up so that they too can encounter God, experience Him, and be transformed in His presence. I'm so grateful that we have a great team 
in our, in our church who make church possible. They sacrifice week in and week out so that we could see people get saved, see people have, get, have their lives transformed. And I know that if they would keep serving and they would keep believing, they would keep following God, that they will live purposeful lives. And here's why. Because they are leaders and Christians who know their priority. One of the greatest indicators if you're going to be a great leader is if you know what you need to prioritize. Pastor James would tell this to us. It's not just your ability to say yes to things because sometimes you can just say yes. You can say yes to church. Okay, I'm going to serve. Yay, yay, yay. But you can also say yes to your, to your old friends who are doing things that's not honoring to God. You can say yes to all these things, but it's not just your ability to say yes. It's also your ability to say no. And if you want to embrace your journey to becoming the leader that God wants you to become, you're going to learn what to say no to. And let me ask you today, what are you building? Are we just building our lives? Are we just building what's pleasing to us? Are we just building what looks good on social media? Are we just building our careers? Are we just building all these temporary stuff? Or are we building the kingdom of God? Are we building what God wants us to build? Because that's what we're made to do. We're not just made for all the temporary things in the world. We are made to be about the house of God. And I love how Jesus knew this and he lived this out. Here's the underlying principle of that. Matthew 6 verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Here's what happened uh, in the... In the areas of our church, we have people who serve in different capacities in our church because not everyone is called to work in full-time staff. Uh, the truth of the matter is only less than 1% of the church will work for the full-time staff, but we're all called to serve in different capacities. So we have volunteers, we have team leaders, we have connect leaders, we have team heads, we have regional leaders. And what I've seen from these faithful people who have been serving is that as they embraced their journey of becoming who God has called them to be, of being about the house of God, I saw their lives get transformed. And in turn to that, their families and their careers were blessed by God. And that's not just because they were, God just randomly just poured out the blessing because they served in the church. It was because as they were serving, as they were building the house of God, they were voting for the leader that God wants them to become. And their families were noticing it. And their bosses were noticing it. And the people around them were noticing it. I know one guy who, for a fact, was serving in our church, giving his life out to the church, but working a full-time job. He became so good, his boss noticed how good he was. And for some reason, because of the culture that he's bringing to their workplace, the boss decided to make this leader a part owner in their company. But that's because he was casting a vote to the leader that God wants him to become. What are you building? Are you just building your career or are you building the house of God? Because here's what I know. Who you're becoming will be determined by what you're building. Who you're becoming will be determined by what you're building. If you're just building your profile, your career, it's going to crumble. Just like how this crumbled because everything will crumble except the house of God. What are you building? That's why on your seats right now, you have a flyer. Uh, segue. What, and it says, what are you building? Because if you are here and you're hearing my voice, maybe you're watching online, we want you to serve with us unashamedly. And here's why. Because we know that the favor of God follows those who are faithful with him. And if you would serve in our house, not only will you get blessed, but you'll get the chance to be a part of a movement that is changing people's lives. And when I see someone get saved, when I see someone get developed in their calling, nothing will ever top that. Because being about God's house, and this is my last point, the bottom line of that is just investing in other people. And Jesus did that. He invested in in other people. In our church, the reason why we want you to serve and we want you to get involved is because we don't just want you to get involved in the machine that's producing, that's working. We want to invest in your life, but we won't be able to do that if you're not involved. 
in our leadership, we've been tweaking some things, and we're、uh, right now we're going through book studies. We've subscribed to an amazing platform that gives us book summaries, and we're going through it. And we want our leaders to read that because we want to invest in their lives. We've been doing coaching, which is just asking questions and listening to people so that we could help them grow. Because our heart as a church is not that you would come and serve and work and do stuff for us. Our heart is that you would grow holistically. Our God is our heart is that you won't just build the building, but we could get to build who God wants you to become, so that He could bless you in whichever area He has planted you in. That's our heart as a church, and I believe that's what we are made to do. We're made to serve other people. We're made to invest in other people. As leaders, we should be like like sponges. I was washing the dishes this morning,、um, as an industrious man. Uh, I was washing the dishes, and I realized this: that sponges are useless when they're dry. That's why, when you're not embracing learning as a lifestyle, and you're just dry, you can't give out to other people. So you gotta fill up before you can pour out. You gotta fill up before you can pour out. In the same way, did you know? That when sponges are always wet, they start to accumulate bacteria. Ah,、huh? for the med people here, they start to accumulate bacteria, and instead of cleaning what you're washing, you're infecting it with bacteria. In the same way, we have Christians all over the world who are so busy accumulating knowledge. So busy hopping from church to church and accumulating stuff and correcting other people's theology. That we forget to do what God's all about. God's not just about filling you up; He's about you pouring out to other people. He's about you loving other people. Have we become so wet and so filled up that we forget to love, forgot to love other people? Because this is what God's about. God's about you becoming the leader that He wants you to be, so that you can help other people in the journey. So that other people can build on who you've become, so that other people can see you and can can say, "Oh, I, I want to be like them. I want to follow Jesus just like how He follows Jesus." First Corinthians eleven verse one says, Paul says, "You should imitate me just as I imitate Christ." When I was newly saved, I was going through a lot of stuff, but there was a leader. In the church that I was involved in, that technically wasn't really my leader in my connect group, wasn't really my leader in a team that he was handling, but chose to spend time with me, chose to invest in my life, would pour out to us, would invite us over to dinners and just do life with us. And as we were doing life with him, we saw him just serve without expectation, without nothing in return, not not wanting the recognition. I remember this one time that. He declined a great leadership opportunity that would put him in the front line and would get him the recognition. But he declined that because he had a conviction that his call was to serve in the back, and he would be more effective in that. I remember to, saying, saying to myself in that moment, "Wow, I want to be like that. I want to have a pure intention in serving. I want to imitate him as he is imitating Christ." I watched him just serve. People pour out to people. Never posted it on social media because you don't need to post everything. I saw him just just pour out his life to church. And I remember the first time、um, we got invited to his house. There was a huge stack of books. He was a huge reader, but we've actually never heard it from him. It's like I'm a reader. I'm reading a lot of books. Right? Just never boasted about anything. And fast forward to now, many many years later, we caught up last month just over Zoom, and. He was telling me about about his life. Has been in full time ministry now for, I think, almost two decades, and he's reevaluating what he's been doing in his life. And because he is serving full time, he's actually not getting paid by the church. He was raising his own funds so that he could pour out to other people. And、I、remember telling a story of how he's watching the lives of his other friends. Who are now having their own families, 
and now about to buy their second, their third house and about to start their own business. And he told me, I was, I was looking at that and they're also Christians. And I want to say this in Tagalog, I'll not translate it in English. He said, it got him asking, God, worth it ba talaga to? Is it, God, is this really worth it, what, what I'm doing? Then he said, but when I was asking God that question, I remembered people like you who I'm so grateful that I got to be part of your life. He was saying this to me and I'm seeing now who you've become and what, you're, what you get to do and what you get to do, Max. And he said what Miko gets to do. And this, remember this person wasn't technically our leader. He was just spending time with us. And he said, I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of your lives. And because of that, I think, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. In that moment, I was about to cry, so I turned off my camera and Zoom. And then I just took a moment and said, God, I'm so grateful that the people that you placed in my life, they chose to invest in me. That they chose to pour out to me. And I was a lost kid, but someone believed in me. Now, years ago, Pastor James took a huge risk on me, casted vision on me before I could even see it in myself. Believed, Pastor Kate believed in me for things that I didn't even believe myself in. And I felt like, wow, God, I'm so grateful that the people that you placed around me chose to invest in me. And now because of that, I have the amazing privilege to also serve other leaders, see leaders rise up, see how people get set free, see families get changed. But none of that would be possible if people like them did not invest in me. And I want to tell you here today, someone's counting on who you're becoming. There's some family out there that's counting on you voting for the leader that God wants you to become. There's some company out there that's waiting for you to become the leader who will stand up for integrity so that they could follow your example. There's some individual out there who's waiting for you to stop what you're addicted to so that they could get set free from what they're addicted to as well. Someone is counting on who you are becoming. But are you voting for who God wants you to become? Or are you just voting for the pattern of the world? Someone's counting on you. Someone's counting on you. And I hope the game plan that we would get out of this message is that every single day, we would choose to vote for who God wants us to be. We choose to vote for a leader who has integrity. We choose to vote for a leader who has initiative. We would choose to vote for a leader who has compassion for his people. We would choose to vote for who God wants us to become because I know there's some kid out there who might be like me over a decade ago who's lost, who's counting on you to spend time with them, to invest in them, to pour out to them so that they too can know God and encounter His presence. Someone is counting on you. But I know it's not easy. Leading, man, it's not easy. If you're a leader here, and you can attest to that. Can you raise your hand? Wow. Many perfect leaders as well. But it's not easy. It's, it's, it's testing, man. I'm um, trying to serve people and someone just randomly gets offended by what you're saying. Might be offended right now by, why I'm, by what I'm saying. And, and just people, uh, all these issues coming up, it's testing. And there would be times, I promise you this, there would be times that you'll get to a point where you're going to ask, oh God, can I really do this? Can I be honest? Now, I, I get those thoughts like, man, man, this is huge. Can we really do this? I feel like I can't do this. But maybe that's true. Maybe you can't do it alone because you're not meant to. Maybe the same God who created you, the same God who saved you, the same God who rescued you will be the same God who wants to build you up, the same God who wants to strengthen you, the same God who wants to empower you, the same God who wants to equip you, and the same God who casted vision in you will be the same God who will take you through this journey. Maybe we're not meant to do it alone. Maybe we're meant to rely on God. Come on, all across this room, the presence of God is already here. Can you stand? His presence right now. 
Because I believe God's been speaking to people in this venue and it's been speaking to people you're watching online. And if you are here and you know that you've been struggling and becoming who God wants you to be, and maybe you've been feeling overwhelmed the past weeks, maybe you've been feeling, God, I can't really, I don't think I can do this. Maybe you're struggling with doubt and anxiety and worry. Or maybe now's just a time for you to align, get aligned with God. Because maybe we've been so overwhelmed because we have been thinking that it's all up to us. As much as this message is about who you're voting for, it's actually less about us striving to become somebody else. It's about us embracing the journey that God has put us in, surrendering to His will and following Him, relying on Him, putting our hope in Him. So if that's you and you're here and you're a bit overwhelmed with what God has entrusted to you and you feel like you just need a little bit of refreshing, we're going to sing the beautiful chorus of that song. But if that's you, can you lift your hands to heaven? And I want to pray. I'm lifting my hands because I know yeah, there are things in my life that I need God to come through. Come on, God, thank you, Lord, for every person that's here. Thank you, Jesus, for every single Christian that's watching this online. I pray, God, that you would help us in our journey. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would empower us, you would equip us, God, you would strengthen us, you would add courage to us, God, so that we can do what you have called us to do. God, I thank you that you're going to raise up leaders in this room who will have the ability not just to strive for what's right, but to surrender to your will, God. Lord, we thank you that the battle is not up to us God we thank you that you are fighting for us Lord we thank you that you are strengthening us you are working in us God and we thank you that we can rely on you come on all across this place can we sing this chorus one more time Surrender it to you, Lord. here and you know in your heart that you're really struggling with your journey of transformation you know in your heart that there's something inside of you that you're trying to change that you can't seem to change maybe it's been months maybe it's been years maybe it's been decades that you're struggling with this thing that you're addicted to maybe it's a thought pattern that you can't seem to get over with maybe it's response it's a response that you have towards your relationships that you can't seem to overcome or maybe you're a leader and you feel like you've just been hitting a wall that you can't overcome I believe that God wants to minister to you in this moment I believe that God wants to set people free and to break chains in this moment. So if that's you, I actually want you to take a step of faith and come forward down to, the, to our altar. And our leaders, the connect leaders and our staff, they will pray for you. 
for whatever you are going through. If you're watching online, you can hop on to live.favor.church and our prayer team is waiting for you there. For the rest of us, we're just going to continue to worship and I want you to maybe take this time to reflect about the choices that you're making. No, if that's you and you need prayer with something that you can't seem to get over with, I want you to come forward. Don't be shy. It's between you and God. For the rest of us, come on. We're just going to worship right now. prayed for stay up here but I just want to take a moment as we're praying for everybody else that's in here and people that are watching online what a what a wonderful word from God that was from Paul and uh, I love it because he was talking about the greatest leader of all time was Jesus and you know one of the hallmarks of a great leader is someone that leads by example and Jesus so many times would talk about sacrificial love servant love feeding the poor he would be there he would help heal those that were sick he led by example and one of the greatest things in fact I would say the greatest thing that Jesus did in his servant leadership was going to the cross was willfully allowing himself to be put on a cross and to be crucified. Why did he do that? Because the Bible's clear 
that each one of us has sin in our lives. That sin separates us from God. And because of what Jesus did when he went to that cross and he died and his blood was shed and poured out, but he didn't stay dead. He defeated death. He resurrected from the grave. Because of that, that now gives us the opportunity to approach God because of what Jesus did, to approach him and say, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for all those things that I've done that has separated me from you. And maybe you're here today, and I know there's people watching online that you've never made this decision before to come to God and say, please forgive me. You know, the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 10 that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so I want to give every person here that opportunity, that chance now. Online as well, if you're watching, I'm going to count to three. Why don't, why don't we all just close our eyes if you're in the back. We're still praying for people up the front. Take your time. Take your time. The presence of God is here. But if you're in the back, if you're online, you're saying, James, that's me. When I count to three, I want you to lift your hand nice and high so I can see it. And we're going to pray for you right where you are. If you're saying, I want to say yes to Jesus, I want to ask him to forgive me of my sins. Come into a relationship with him today. If that's you on the count of three, you lift your hands. One, two, three. Right now, all over this place. Awesome. Hands going up here. Hands over on the side. Hands up in the back as well. Thank you, Jesus. If you're online, if you're alone in your bedroom, just raise your hand as a sign to God right now. Thank you, Lord. If you lifted your hand, can you put your hand on your heart right now? Because we're going to pray a prayer reflecting that verse that I just quoted that Paul wrote. We're all going to pray this prayer together, a simple prayer that asks Jesus to come, to come into our lives, to forgive us of our sins. So why don't we pray that together? Say, dear Lord Jesus, come to you right now and I ask you to forgive my sin. I believe that you died on the cross but you defeated death and you rose victorious. So right now I ask, please come into my life. Let your Holy Spirit fill me. Become my Lord and Savior. In your wonderful name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give God praise for every person that just prayed that prayer? You know, there's a few hands that went up all over the building, and I'm sure there was hands and people that responded online. Uh, if you're in the building, one of our team would have seen that you put up their, your hands. And so we're just going to try and come to you and just say hi. And, and we want to pray with you. Just explain that decision that you made. Uh, because, you know, like I said earlier on in the service, that God has not designed us to be alone. It's not good. The Bible says in Genesis, it's not good for man to be alone. And so the Christian walk is designed to be done in community. So we'd love to come alongside you, help you. If you're online, you made that decision, please let us know. All the details are on the screen. You can text the number if you're in the Philippines, scan the QR code, go to the link. We would love to really uh, connect with you. Hey, can we honor Pastor Paul? Wasn't that just a great message? Amazing word. He's about to uh, be on the favor hood as well, just to talk uh, with everyone that's online. So, so stay online. What an amazing word, though, investing uh, in your leadership and, and Jesus. I, I mean, yeah, amazing. If Jesus has the humility to ask questions, then we should all have the humility to ask and to never stop learning. Amen.